Welcome. This is the Oklahoma Sooner postgame show. As the Sooners took on a team from a state known mostly for potatoes, and in this game they turned Idaho State into mashed potatoes. The Sooners scored first, they scored often, and they scored last in a game that was simply put a lapper. 64-0 over the Idaho State Bengals. I said it a few days ago, I'll say it again, the game should have never have been scheduled. And please, Oklahoma, do me a favor. If and when you schedule these guys again, make sure to do it after I have died of old age, please, because I never want to have to see Idaho State step on that field again. Complete mismatch. We knew that before the game, and it was confirmed on Saturday. Give credit to the Oklahoma fans as well. Over 84,000 showed up for this home opener at Gaylord Memorial Stadium. The weather did not deter them for the most part. And also give credit to the Sooners themselves for playing very focused, disciplined football in this game, offensively and defensively, and doing their best to not let the weather affect them. So, terrific job, because let me tell you something, it rained the entire game, and it rained at times significantly. So Oklahoma, they did not let the weather um, disturb their ability to get ready for this game and also to execute. Now, let's go ahead and go over the four keys to this game that we reviewed on the Oklahoma-Idaho State game just a few days ago. Number one, Mr. Jones. How do I think he played? Thought he played well. Thumbs up in this department. Not only for the way he played, but because the Oklahoma coaches let him throw the ball. He threw it 32 times and completed more than half the passes. Got 18 of them. And keep in mind, some of his incompletions were not his fault. They were drops, which we'll go over in a second. So Mr. Jones did a fantastic job, I thought, in this game. I know it's Idaho State, but then again, it was his first career start in front of you know, nearly 85,000 fans. Thought he handled the situation well, and he threw for three touchdown passes. Did have one interception, and that was on a play in which he was just eyeing the receiver a little too long during terrific pass protection. Even against a bad team like Idaho State's, defensive backs and linebackers usually are going to know which direction you're throwing the ball toward if you keep eyeing that receiver for a significant amount of time. In this case, a few seconds. That's where Jones got picked off, but again, it was 46 nothing in the third quarter when that interception took place. So no harm, no foul there. Good job by Mr. Jones overall. Number two, yellow is bad on the eyes. Another thumbs up for Oklahoma, a big time improvement. Remember last week they had 12 penalties in that loss to BYU, most of those penalties on the offensive line. This time, Oklahoma limited the penalties, only five penalties for 45 yards. Uh, three of those penalties were in the first half. And I think I had OU getting uh, three penalties on the offensive interior or on the uh, quarterback. A couple of false starts and a delay of game. But a lot better result this time than that debacle they had in the penalty department um, just a week ago against Brigham Young. Number three, half and half. I will go thumbs up in this department as well. I know that DeMarco Murray, who had a terrific game, and we'll talk about him in a second too, I know Murray played the opening possession of the third quarter, but for the most part, you did see the reserves play a lot in the second half. And there were a couple of reserves that I really liked uh, seeing in this game. That's um, Jamarcus McFarland as well as Ronnell Lewis. Lewis, you might remember him, the outstanding eight-man football player from Dewar High School uh, right here in Oklahoma. Well, got some good playing time and did a lot on the defensive side. Again, these are the future Sooner superstars, we hope. Um, that you'll be seeing in 2010, 2011, but you also um, got to see them play on uh, Saturday and got to see them play quite a bit. And Jeremy Calhoun um, saw some quality playing time carrying the ball for uh, Oklahoma, largely in the third and fourth quarters. So thumbs up there. And then finally, uh, key number four to this game for Oklahoma. No butterfingers. In this case, I'm going to go thumbs off. Um, not up or down, I'm going to go off. Oklahoma did have some drop balls, uh, they did lose a fumble, but also you have to remember this was not ideal weather um, for football. And if you've ever played the game, you know how difficult it is to hold on to the ball. I don't care how many times the officials change the footballs out, I don't care how often they are trying to dry those footballs with towels, it doesn't matter. The ball is going to be slick and it's going to get harder and harder to maintain as the game goes along. So thumbs off in this situation. Oklahoma, again, they need to do a little bit better job of catching the ball and also holding on to the ball. But in this situation, Mother Nature, I thought, played a factor in some of it. So we'll go thumbs off there because it's not a fair evaluation. So overall, outstanding performance by Oklahoma. 
again, I don't feel this is a game that you can get better as a team as far as execution by playing a, a scrimmage like Idaho State. We thought Idaho State was terrible entering this game. And actually, we will say one good thing about Idaho State. They improved their total yardage from this game as opposed to the last one. They had 42, 42 total yards against Oklahoma. Guess how many they had against Arizona State? 37. So, hey, maybe they'll have 65 total yards by the time we get to Halloween. <laughs> anyway, bad news also for Idaho State. Besides not scoring, they did end up with minus 22 yards rushing for the game, which meant they ended up with uh, 64 yards of passing yardage. things to keep in mind about this game I thought first of all outstanding job by DeMarco Murray he only touched the ball 12 times but he did gain over um, 100 yards on the ground and did score so that's good right there also some things to keep in mind Ryan Broyles nice game for the sophomore out of Norman High School Ryan Broyles had over 150 yards receiving in this game and caught all three of Landry Jones touchdown passes big game for him if you want to nitpick at least one area for Oklahoma right now, and it definitely, it definitely deserves um, a lot of attention, who's going to be Oklahoma's other go-to receiver? We know that Boyles, he's a main contributor, and right now he is the main target. But the one thing that we noticed about Oklahoma last year is that, yes, we know how good of a year Jermaine Gresham had, how valuable he is to this ball club, and even more valuable because he's not there injury out for the year. But also last year, we had the three receivers in Iglesias and Johnson and Chaney. They're all gone. So right now you're without four weapons that you had last year and you thought you were going to get the tight end back. Well, Gresham's gone. So who's going to be the guy to compliment Ryan Broyles? We still do not know yet. And you may not have to worry about that in the upcoming game against Tulsa, but you will have to concern yourself with that in three weeks when you play at Miami on October 3rd. I guarantee you the Miami coaches right now are game planning and telling their players if we can contain Ryan Boyles, we're going to have a chance to win this game. And if you look at it from that perspective, considering what Oklahoma's done, I pretty much don't blame the Miami coaches for feeding that logic into their players' heads. Oklahoma will need to have a complimentary receiver, somebody they can count on. He doesn't have to be a Joaquin Iglesias. He doesn't have to be a Jermaine Gresham statistic type. It needs to be a guy that can hold on to the ball and that can get yardage after the catch. You have that in Ryan Broyles, but I guarantee you in a few weeks Miami will be game planning after him like you won't believe. And if Oklahoma cannot find somebody to compliment Broyles, I don't care who's quarterback in the Sooners, it'll be very tough to win that game. I know you might lose that game if they cannot find that second go-to guy. Ryan Broyles can't do it by himself. Overall though, love the performance by Oklahoma. They could have played this game in my backyard. They could have played this game in a parking lot on campus. They could have played this game at the duck pond on campus. Wouldn't have mattered. Oklahoma would have won the game just as easily, if not worse. And I think Idaho State better be thankful it was raining. Otherwise, it could have been worse than 64-0. Great job by the Sooners. It doesn't prove that they're all the way back because Idaho State's that bad of a team, but winning sure beats losing any day of the week. Up next for Oklahoma, they'll play on September the 19th, a 2:30 game at home against Tulsa. And I'll tell you something about the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. They're better than you think. Again, they're better than you think. We will break down the Sooners and the Golden Hurricane on our next weekly matchup show, which will be um, in just a few days. So uh, check back with us um, for that update. Again, Oklahoma wins 64-0 over a bad Idaho State team. And up next for the Sooners, it'll be Tulsa. That game at 2.30 Saturday in Norman and that game will be televised on Fox Sports Southwest. Thanks for watching.